In this video, we will practice some multiple choice questions about the end behavior of rational functions. This is AP Precalculus Topic 1.7. If you appreciate this content, please don't forget to hit that like button. Number one, the rational function f is given by f of x is equal to this expression, where k is a positive integer. For which of the following values of k, will the graph of f be a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero? In previous videos, we have learned that a rational function will have a horizontal asymptote y equals zero when the degree of the denominator is bigger. We see that the degree of the denominator is five. So that means to have a horizontal asymptote y equals zero, the numerator has to have degree of four at most. Looking at the x minus one times x plus three part, that's x times x makes x squared. So the value of k could either be one or two. If k is one, then we just have x times x times x, that's x to the third power. Or if k is two, that's x squared times x times x, that's x to the fourth power. So the answer is going to be a, because that's one of the two possibilities that we have. Number two, the rational function r is given by this expression and is equivalent to r of x is equal to p of x over q of x. So p of x represents the polynomial in the numerator and q of x is the polynomial of the denominator. Which of the following statements is true? We can find the leading term of p of x by looking only at the leading term of each factor. So that's 2x times x times x, which is 2x to the third power. So p of x has degree three. Similarly, the leading term of q of x will be 3x times 2x times x, which is 6x to the third power. So q of x also has degree three. So for option A where it says the degree of P is less than the degree of Q, we know that cannot be the answer. The degree of P is greater than the degree of Q. That's not the answer either. The remaining two answers say that the degrees are equal, so that's possible. We have learned that when the degrees of the numerator and denominator are equal, there is going to be a horizontal asymptote. So uh, the horizontal asymptote is going to be the ratio of these leading coefficients. So we know there will be a horizontal asymptote at y equals two over six, which reduces down to one third. And that horizontal asymptote tells us the end behavior, including the right end behavior of r of x, which should equal one third. So the answer is going to be D. Number three, the function H is given by this expression. Which of the following statements is true? Let's make an equivalent expression for H of X by combining these two separate fractions into one. Let's multiply the first fraction by X minus one over X minus one. That way, both denominators have an x minus one. And let's multiply the other fraction by x plus three over x plus three. Now both denominators have an x plus three. Now we have like denominators. We make one big fraction using the like denominator and we add the numerators. Be careful, when we add these together, be careful what you do with that minus sign. So this is really two uh, x to the third power times x minus one minus four times x plus three. So uh, I think it will be safer if you go ahead and move this negative sign from here up to here. Make this a plus and make this the minus. That way you'll be sure to distribute a negative four. So for the new numerator, 2x to the third power times x, that's gonna be 2x to the fourth power uh, times the negative one, that's gonna be negative 2x to the third power. Now the negative four. 
negative four times x, that's negative four x, and negative four times three, that's minus 12. I don't see any like terms, so that's it. The answer is probably A, because the numerator matches what we just found in the numerator right here. But let's make extra sure they have the denominator multiplied out. So let's go ahead and multiply x plus 3 times x minus 1 and see what we get. Distributing the x gives us x squared minus x. Distributing the 3 gives us 3x minus 3. And combining like terms gives us the 2x in the middle. So we have x squared plus 2x minus 3 which does match the denominator for option A. So this is the answer. We didn't need it, but they also mentioned the part about H having the same end behavior as Y equals 2X squared. A rational function will always have the same end behavior as the quotient of its leading terms. So 2X to the fourth power divided by X squared simplifies down to 2X squared. So that matches as well. Number four, the rational function h is expressed as the quotient of two polynomial functions f and g given by h of x equals f of x over g of x. The function f is given by this expression. If the graph of h has a slant asymptote of y equals 2x minus 1, which of the following describes g? We have learned that a rational function has a slant asymptote only if the degree of the numerator is exactly one more than the denominator. Since the numerator has degree three, that means g of x must have degree two. So that eliminates options c and d. We have also learned that the slope of the slant asymptote is the quotient of the leading coefficients. We already see that the leading coefficient of the numerator is six and the slope of the given slant asymptote is two. So the leading coefficient of g has to be such that six divided by the leading coefficient will give us two. Obviously six divided by three will give us two. So three has to be the leading coefficient of g. Putting these two facts together, the answer is a. Number five, the rational function h is given by h of x equals this expression. Which of the following describes the end behavior of h? The end behavior of h is dictated only by the leading terms. The right end behavior of h will be the same as the right end behavior of 2x to the fifth power over 3x squared. But this simplifies down to 2 thirds x to the third power. x to the fifth power divided by x squared is x to the third power. This limit is positive infinity because as x approaches infinity, this expression just gets bigger and bigger and bigger. So that's the right end behavior. Similarly, the left end behavior of h will be the limit as x approaches negative infinity of 2x to the third power. But this is negative infinity and uh, if it helps you to think about it, you can think two times negative infinity to the third power is the same thing as two times negative infinity because when you raise a negative number to an odd power, it stays negative. And let's face it, cubing infinity is still an infinity. And then two times negative infinity is negative infinity. All right, positive two times a very large negative number is still a very large negative number. I'm putting all of this in a thought bubble because uh, this is something that you should never write down on a test or a quiz. This is not proper notation. This is not proper math. Uh, infinity is not a number. It can't be cubed. It can't be multiplied. But this is a useful tool, a useful way of thinking. At this point, we have the right end behavior and the left end behavior. We just need to match these up with the verbal descriptions. So we could 
analyze, interpret the right end behavior in the following way. As x increases without bound, h of x increases without bound. So let's see, let's find that. As x increases without bound, h of x increases without bound. That one's good. As x increases without bound, h of x increases without bound. Good. For c and d, I see it says h of x decreases without bound. So c and d are out. So now let's read the rest of the sentence. Um, first, let's read the left end behavior, which could be interpreted as, as x decreases without bound, h of x decreases without bound. Let's see, as x decreases without bound, h of x decreases without bound. So the answer is A, because B says, as x decreases without bound, h of x increases without bound. That would be positive infinity right here. Number six, a polynomial function P has three distinct zeros, each with multiplicity one, and its leading coefficient is positive. The polynomial function Q has exactly one zero with multiplicity three, and its leading coefficient is negative. The rational function H can be written as the quotient of P and Q. In other words, H of X equals P of X divided by Q of X. Which of the following statements about H must be true? I'm going to build a model of H of X to help me remember all of these words. So they said the polynomial function P has three distinct zeros, um, each of multiplicity one. So we don't know what those zeros are, but imagine that those zeros are A, B, and C. That would give us factors of X minus A times X minus B times X minus C. Each multiplicity one, so no exponents. Um, I'm putting this in the numerator because later we were told that P is in the numerator. So let's turn our attention, oh, it also says the leading coefficient is positive. So I'm just leaving this positive. If it says negative, I'll put a negative in the front. Now, the polynomial function Q has exactly one zero with multiplicity three. Okay, so one zero. So um, I'm gonna call it D. I'm gonna call that zero D. So that would be um, X minus D cubed because it has multiplicity three. And the leading coefficient is negative, so I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna put a negative here in the front. All right, so this is my model that will help me answer these questions. As I'm reading through the options, I see that they have already used the letter A. So um, just to keep it clean, I am going to change this zero to E because uh, it has nothing to do with this A right here. Anyway, all of the options talk about the horizontal asymptote. So let's see what we can learn about the horizontal asymptote of H. Uh, that's going to depend on the leading term of the numerator and the denominator. And we know that we can uh, find the leading term of each by focusing on the leading term of each factor. All right, don't forget the fact that this one is being cubed. So leading terms. The left and right end behavior of H will equal the limit as X approaches positive or negative infinity of X to the third power over negative X to the third power. The leading term of the numerator divided by the leading term of the denominator. But in this form, we can see that the X to the third power will cancel out, uh, leaving negative one. So the fact that the limit is a constant is a horizontal asymptote. So we have a horizontal asymptote at y equals negative one. So clearly the answer is not a, we're not getting y equals zero. The graph has a horizontal asymptote at y equals a, where a is greater than zero. All right, this negative one is one example of an a, but uh, it is not going to be greater than zero, it is negative. So it's not gonna be B. 
horizontal asymptote at y equals a where a is less than zero? The answer is going to be c, but let's go ahead and see what d says. The graph of h has no horizontal asymptote. Now, we got a constant, so it's definitely uh, going to have a horizontal asymptote. So the answer is c. Hey guys, don't forget to like and subscribe, but also if you found this video helpful, there's a lot more where that came from. You can click the upper link, which will take you to the whole unit playlist, or you can click the lower link, which will take you to the next video in the playlist. See you there.